Yes, sir. May I help you? A wandering minstrel, I a thing of shreds and patches, of ballad songs and snatches, and dreamy lullaby. My catalogue is long, though every passion ranging, and to your humours changing, I tune my supple song. I tune my supple song. <laughs> Good evening, and welcome to This Week in Joe's Basement. I'm Joe, and this is my basement. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry I did that last week. I was just, I'm that banana. I need something real. Mmm. Ah. Much better. Thank you. All right. Did I say I'm Joe and this is my basement? Did I get that part out? Yes, I did. Thank you. Right. Anyway, so this week in Joe's basement, um, I'm going to take a few field trips and address a uh, leftover viewer request from last week, but, uh, First, I want to get to the mail. All right, this week's viewer mail comes in two varieties: the the uh, welcome mail, mm, shit. Well, which I will place on one side, and the unwelcome mail, which I will place on the other side. The, you know, we here at Joe's Basement have a long-standing tradition that we will respond to anything that you send to us in the mail, anything of any form whatsoever. And and I mean, even if it wasn't you know written on paper, even if it's some sort of a strange dripping object in a paper package as long as it didn't decompose by the time it you know came time to air the show then uh, then we'd respond to it so generally we like viewer mail okay but uh, somebody has stumbled onto something that I don't like which is being subscribed to magazines and then being billed for them that I don't like and uh, so I got the National Review this week and uh, guitar player magazine and uh, PC computing a bill for that and a bill for the National Review to the non-existent Joe Basement, so I guess my credit rating isn't any in, in any danger, but I don't appreciate it. Whoever did it out there, okay, you got me, all right? So stop. It's not funny anymore. Right. Um, so also this week, we heard from uh, Mr. Thomas Volman, who uh, invites us to come visit the set of his schlocky horror film, Dead Meat. And we'll take a look on that at some point with or without the camera. And then I had something else here I really wanted to read. Um, shoot. Where is it? <clears throat> Did you see the letter from Boozy, Dan? Nope. I don't know what to do with Oh. Shit. This is real. I really did. This is around here somewhere. And it's the only thing I had to do with my opening this week at all. What did I do? Wait. <laughs> um, I must have lost it during the last take or something. Here's the art. The reader. Tom Svolman. Can you look over there? Try looking on the other side. Maybe you toss it. The, or is it on the uh, table up there? The no. No. <clears throat> is that not it? Underneath it? No, this is an um, oh, okay. index card. Something scribbled on it. Ah, here we go. <laughs> all right. <sighs> well, all right. So, hi. Letter from Boozy. Little heart over the eye. For the dot indicates a female viewer. No doubt. 
She writes, so Joe, it is now 10.31 p.m. on Monday, June 1st, 1992. I just spent the last half hour viewing your um, program, and I have only one question. What the hell was that? <clears throat> you know, I've always wondered what the deal is with those public access cable channels, and what would possess people to put their family reunions, rinky-dink talent shows, etc. on television. Do you know? Obviously not, because your program's actually entertaining. People can relate to your sub-level adventures more so than relating to Aunt Gertrude singing her funky version of Amazing Grace. I found my first week in Joe's basement to be an innovative, creative, and fun experience. You and your basement buddies are, for lack of a better phrase, on the cutting edge of public access television. And what a place to be. How does it feel, Boozy? How does it feel? Hey, wait a minute. I forgot to give you my idea for the show. How about coming out of the basement sometimes? You could definitely use a tan. I'd even help you. Boozy. Well, since uh, she hasn't specified what sort of help she's offering, i um, taking my own initiative this week, and uh, I'm going to take a couple field trips. And uh, the first one is uh, we had a request from a viewer from last week's fourth Joe's Basement viewer call-in show. That makes that parses it all. Um, we had a request from a viewer, which uh, took us a little time to respond to, uh, to visit his friend, Phil Davis of Hoffman Estates, the most interesting man in the entire world. So um, without further ado, let me bring you up today on that as we did finally address this gentleman's request, always ready and willing, this week in Joe's basement. You want to, you want to go through all the books and see if you could find the copyright 1969 for it. Good evening, Joe's basement. Yeah, well, you guys are looking for ideas? Yes. What do you guys do? What do we do? We do anything that you tell us to do. Okay, I want you, I want you guys to go out to Hoffman Estates mm -hmm. and visit Phil Davis, okay. a resident. Is he a friend of yours? Yeah, and he's like the goofiest guy I know, as in weird. Okay. So, um, what's your name? I'm Chuck Bathgate. Okay. Give us you guys, guys do, do this for me, because uh, I just had a son two days ago. Okay. And I greatly appreciate it. Oh, we will absolutely do it for you, I promise. All right, thanks. Okay. Um, do you know when Phil's usually home? Um, he, he doesn't work or anything, so <laughs> he's got his own house. He's just kicking back, partying all the time. He's usually there. Okay. What does he do for a living? Uh, party. He parties a lot? Yeah. He parties for a living, in That's fact. That's about it, man. Okay. Phil Davis. Phil Davis. <laughs> so we should go take our cameras out to Hoffman Estates. It's yeah, a long way. It, he better be interesting. Huh? It will. It, just meeting this guy, this guy is interesting. He can talk your heads off and weird shit. Okay. When, when everybody goes over there, it's Phil's world. So if you could, like, sort of relate to that. Okay. Yeah, because we met somebody here. Are you Phil Davis? Yeah. Oh, Phil, good to meet you. How's it going? That's Joel. How are you doing? So your friend Jeff Bathgate sent us to meet you. He hey. said you were the most interesting person he'd ever met. And you party a lot. <laughs> yeah, you know. I'm young, meet a lot of people out here. I know the whole community. Good. At large. What do you do for a living? I have a construction company now. <laughs> and uh, my, my latest was my six-year battle with my home with the Hoffman Estates people. Village Hall versus me for the last six years. Not only battle, the oldest dispute, they're writing about it in the papers and stuff. So I'm like at the tail end. Still so working. June 17th, it. court date. Try to settle everything off now. I'm still doing some manicuring to the property to comply to their needs, which are pretty much unconstitutional. We play a lot of ball? Huh? Any chance we could come inside your house? Well, we're still redecorating. Like, I'm, not, I'm having an open house on Tuesday that you'd be glad to come to. I'd be glad to invite you over. It's a long, it's a long drive, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, I, could sh I could probably show you some of it if you want to come in. Please. Here's the, uh, here's the Florida room with uh, the hot tub with the with the deck attached to it, made out of cedar wood with a skylight. You know, if you're ever uh, uh, with, your, with a nice looking girl sometime, you'll be able to look at the moon sometimes. And so like when you can, a little late at night, you'll be able to uh, 
lounge around the pool and stuff. And uh, the whole house has been new, newly sighted by some people on my crew. They're very good at that. And uh, took a long time. It was the first time I did siding on the property, but mm -hmm. I have a juice bar. I'm, uh, I'm like, I'm kind of like on a crusade, you know, against alcohol in the area and providing, I'm going to provide a juice bar right here and I'm going to keep in stock well, a lot of creative juice drinks that I can offer people that come over to party with me. There's a, probably close to 3,000 people that I'm currently uh, have friendships with in the community. Um, so I'm going to be putting that in here. How do you start to meet all these people? Well, it's funny. Uh, I ordered a pizza at Zippy's one day and uh, the delivery guy I became friends with and he just introduced me to the rest of the community one by one and uh, obviously I've spent a lot of time cultivating a lot of uh, social activities and relationships with people. Something I think that the village of Hoffman Estates is not very, uh, is very opposed to. Uh, I've learned a lot about where I live. Um, I think um, basically... Ms. Johnson, oh Ms. Johnson, is there another patient here for me? Ms. Johnson? I'm right here, doctor. Oh, there you are. Oh, I'm sorry, but uh, you're so easy to overlook. Oh? That doesn't offend you, does it? No. Well, you know, it shouldn't, because I myself am often easy to overlook in the crowd of the thousands of people. But we are not here to talk about me, are we? No. Let's talk about you. Oh, uh, okay, sure. So what brings you into my office, my dull little Liebchen? Well, my friend Janet has been seeing a psychiatrist for several years, and I thought, well, I should try one, too. So, what would you like me to do for you? Well, um, Janet's psychiatrist has helped her to, to, to adjust, you know, and, and fit in better. Oh, so what you really want me to do is to adjust you. Tell me, do you often find yourself feeling as if you are being manipulated by others? Well, um, well, well, I like at work, you know, um, everybody always tells me what to do all the time, all day long, and, mm. and, and nobody notices me, nobody notices me at all. But. Now, nobody ever sees you. Oh, you poor little thing. I tell you. So, tell me something about the job where you work. Well, um, I'm the secretary in this large accounting firm, and well, I'm ordered around all day long. And, you know, secretaries are like flies. They're all over the place. And I've been a secretary practically all my life, and I just don't like it. Nobody. Nobody acknowledges me. No, nobody ever sees me. Nobody ever knows I'm around or, or anything. I mean, the boss even has me calling up and ordering flowers for his wife. I mean, I don't think that's part of my job. I mean, so does does no no one in the office acknowledges you? Um, do you get no acknowledgement at all from the boss? Does the boss never come by and say, "Oh, what what a lovely uh, thing you're wearing" or something like that? No, my. My boss never acknowledges me. He, I mean, people in the office say hi to each other all the time, and you know that my boss says hi to everyone else except me. Well, tell me, is the boss that you have the man or the woman? Well, he's a, he, he's a man. Oh, so this is the man boss. So what is it? What what sort of excitement does you want from the boss? Do you want him to give give you occupational help? Well, I, I would at least like him to, you know, get my name right or something. I, you know, at least to acknowledge me instead of, you know, for Secretary's Day, I, I got nothing. You, get, you know, and I think he should acknowledge me and give me flowers or something like that. I mean, just a, for him to talk to me and say, you know, hi, Jill, but it never happens. So, what happens, Jan, is that the boss never even understands who you are. He doesn't even come up to you and say, 
to Jan, you do the good job every day. Is this right? He doesn't. He he walks by to the. He treats you as if you were the water cooler. Only he never stops for the drink. That's it. That's oh. probably the best analogy I've ever heard. Oh my goodness! My goodness! You poor thing. This is a good question, right? It's an excellent question. Okay. I think. I think it's the ultimate question, actually. Okay. Um, what's your favorite color? Blue. Blue? Yes. My favorite color, orange. Orange? Mm hmm Your absolute most favoritist? Yep. Hot pinks and fuchsias. Black. Green. Plaid. <laughs> uh, blue. Teal and purple, probably. The combination. My favorite color is blue, red, green, yellow, black, white. Right at the moment, it's the cerulean blue. But that could change. Boy, that's a tough one. Uh, purple, purple, purple. Uh, probably um, turquoise. Favorite color, cerise. Cerise? Mmm, no one knows what it is. That's why I like it. <laughs> red, green, yellow, black, blue. Um, orange, I like orange too. So listen, do you have a favorite color? Red. I'm sorry? Red. Red. Action. Do you feel strongly enough about it to devote a little piece, musical piece to it? <laughs> sure. Okay, let's hear it. This is red. Seems like there's been a lot of uh, talk about that that I should not have a pool table in my community. What part of what I'm wondering, I'm wondering if it's because there's not a person in, in the village department who can Take hold it. their own against me. And invite them over for some pool. I like to invite them over. Challenge them. I, I challenge the entire community of Papa State. So they can, I'll take them the one at a time, or one at a time, ten at a time. Uh, wait in line on Algonquin Road to challenge me on my pool table. I would like to say that Hoffman Estates, um, with the people that live there, are are beautiful people that um, are striving to find their own niche in the world today and is. As far as uh, one more, my baseball comeback is starting in its presence today, and I'll be fully invited to spring training with the Chicago Cubs in Arizona for my last, my last uh, hurrah. I've been playing baseball for the last 26 years, and uh, a semi-professional baseball player out of Addison. I played last year, and had to pull, had to leave the season a little early due to a couple leg injuries, but. Uh, I'm working them out right now. So do you have any friends? Yeah, well... well what, what do your friends think about this sort of thing? Well, I, I was talking to my friend Marge the other night when we were playing bridge, and I told her that I want to set new challenges for myself, you know, make bigger goals, become more involved in life, and maybe even take a, a basket weaving class. So, how did your friend Marge respond to this? She ignored me. They all did. In fact, they played the whole hand without me. So, you didn't even get to participate in the Trump. Oh, my poor Liebchen. Why do you think, why do you think that your friend March was not even listening to you? Well, I, I think it all started way back in grammar school. You know, I, I would sit in the back of the class, and when I raised my hand, the teacher wouldn't even acknowledge me. Oh, tell me now, was the teacher the male or was he the female? He was a male, Mr. Higgins. 
he never called on me in class. I never got to answer any questions. I never was able to go up to the blackboard and use the pointer. I mean, everyone got to use the pointer except me. Oh, so you never got to use the firm, long pointer of the Professor Higgins. You never got to stand before the class triumphantly with the big pointer of the Professor Higgins in your hand. That's right. Oh, and you know what I did for, for him to notice me? I, I, I put an apple on his desk, and he never picked it up. Every day I waited for him to pick up the a apple, and he never did, and it stayed there for three months, and finally just rotted away. Well, tell me now, how did this make you feel? Well, I was afraid. I, I mean, if they found out the apple was mine, I'd be expelled from school. Oh, so tell me now, what? What feelings do you have about the expelling from the school? Well, if I was expelled, I'd, I'd have to stay in the house all day, and I'd be sitting in the basement, and I wouldn't get any light or any air, and pretty soon I would just start rotting away and turn into this little black piece of dust rotting away in the corner of the basement. And, th and then somebody would think I was garbage and throw me away, and, and then the garbage man would come and take me and, and throw me on top of the garbage heap, and and then nobody would ever notice me. But, but you see, this is by far the more exciting life than you have so far had. I mean, think about this for the moment. There you are. You're the part of the rotting apple, the unnoticed food. So you, someone throws you in through the basement. You begin to disintegrate, and you become the dust particles. But, but now the dust particles are picked up by the garbage man. The garbage man with the big, powerful truck from the garbage union. And the garbage man takes you out to the garbage heap. And he puts you on the top of the garbage heap. I think we are getting to the crux of the matter here. Well, what you want to be is the center of attention. Well, y yeah, I guess. <laughs> Practical puce. That's a it's a fantastic color. I don't know if you have heard of it. Con country yellow. <coughs> uh, well, magenta, pink, blue. Lately, I've been working predominantly in green and blue and violet with um, with purple and pink accents. My favorite color. Oh, I guess blue. Why? Why? Yes. Turquoise blue. Red. Well, that, that's that's hard to say. I mean, uh, um, we're just sort of curious. Blacks, dark colors. I think they're the most dramatic. Uh, woods like the like koa on the chair there, for instance. Uh, it's hard to find a more beautiful color than that. <clears throat> Not the animal colors. The primaries. I like I like all three of them. Mm -hmm. Red, blue, and yellow. Put it that way. My favorite color is purple. Blue. <laughs> he wants me to wax eloquent about cerise. Well, cerise is one of those colors that no one should ever be able to describe or pin down. Their world has to be uh, ignorant of certain things, and cerise could be one of those really good things that has to be a mystery forever and ever. Mm -hmm. It's like mauve. No one can agree on mauve. Yeah. Right? Well, that's like cerise. No one can agree on what cerise is supposed to be. So there has to be a mystery, right? Yeah. You leave a few things to be mysterious. The world's a better place. I've had a lot of uh, uh, people tell me that I probably should run, try to run for mayor. Maybe in the next election, I think I have more of a support system than uh, Mayor O'Malley does. And I think the kind of decisions that I would make would be first is to lift up the property values and work out a program where homeowners can, uh, sky's the limit, improve their property. I think it should be fun to buy a home, it should be fun to improve a home, and more than that, it should be fun to make money on the investment. I mean, what is more fun in this world other than having a good woman in your life than to make money on a, on a transaction? A neighbor who vindictively has called repeatedly to the village, defamating my character, um, arguing and complaining and causing flack in the building department, Basically, what he's, what he's really venting out is his, his real sense of 
low self-esteem with his own house that, that still is the same three-bedroom, one-bath house that he had 25 years ago. Um, the fact that when I was in Jamaica, okay, for two weeks, he, I understand when, when, and the person who is being the, the voice of Hoffman Estates that has brought me to court for all these years is a wife beater. But, but how, how could I become a center of attention? Oh, my liebchen, that is easy. All you need is one of the neurosis. A neurosis? Isn't that for crazy people? No, no, this is the common misconception. The neurosis can be a very powerful and exciting thing. You need something that will protect you from the decay of the rotting apple and from the point of the Mr. Hickens. You need something that will shield you from the evil world around you. Something that will set you free to do the things you wish. A shield? Yes, a big glass shield. Well, I guess so, but, but wouldn't I look pretty stupid carrying around a big glass shield all the time? Well, maybe, most of the time, but not if the big glass shield was the television screen. That's it. That's a great idea. I could be on television. Exactly. And I have just the model here for you. Wow. 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 This is great. This is really great. I, I feel much better now. Oh, I'll be so popular. Oh, oh, I'll have so many friends, and they'll be watching me all the time. Oh, it'll be so much fun. They're really going to notice me now. Everyone's going to notice me now. Oh, oh, thank you, doctor. Thank you. Well, well that's, that's, uh, that's really, that's all right. It's nothing, uh, really. I, I, I can see that we've made a great deal of progress here today, and I just want to thank you so much for coming in. Uh, let's see. Where's the cartoons? Uh, the... Oh, oh, look, the Tom and Jerry meets the Flintstones. Oh, I wanted to see this movie for a long time. Ah, uh, this is good, right? Where's the popcorn? Let's fix this television. Where's the popcorn? <laughs>